Okay, so what I'm going to do here is go through um, a detail of this donut hole method from scratch, uh, which is basically going to be uh, getting a, uh, making an AJAX request to an entire page and just pulling back the, the part of the page that I need. Um, it might not be the most efficient way to do it, but it's going to work. I'm going to be able to do it fairly quickly. So what I'm going to do here, I mean, you, you could start out with this contact web and class 6 if you wanted to. And I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Um, actually, I added this folder before. I'm going to add it on its own again. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a controller. Uh, and my controller is going to be called uh, Donut Hole Controller. Just to sort of keep things separate and just to start from scratch. Okay? And inside of Donut Hole Controller, okay, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a model. Now, the, the one thing that I know is that what, I'm, what I really want to do is I want to have the list of all my contacts, and I want the user to be able to click on one of the contacts and see the details of that contact. But instead of going to a new page, I want it to be in line. So basically, you'll sort of expand out the contact to see the details of the contact. Now, really, what I need for this view are two things. I need a list of contacts, and I just need the selected contact ID, which is going to be an integer. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create, I mean, I mean, I could build this now just to, I mean, for kicks, right? I could go back in here. And once I put in donut hole, all right, I could say debug, start without debugging, and I'm going to get my, you know, error message that it's not going to be able to, you know, find its view, which is fine, right? Um, but you, what I want to do before I create the view, I want to create the model for the view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another folder here. I find this to be pretty helpful to do. Um, I'm going to create a folder called Donut Hole, and these are going to be my view models for the Donut Hole controller. And what I'm going to do here is add a class. This is pretty quickly here, and this is going to be my Donut Hole view model. I'm only going to have two properties. Okay, The two properties that it's going to have are going to be public int selected contact ID. Okay, get set. Again, since this is non nullable, this is going to end up defaulting to zero. Um, and I'm going to have another property uh, public list contact. And these are going to basically be all of my, the contacts in my system. But, uh, you know, if you wanted to, you could filter out the contacts based on your, you know, controller, that sort of thing. So, you know, I'm gonna, I can build this to see that this tests out, right? And I'm going to go back to my donut hole controller. And again, I find this to be pretty easy to do here, is to say donut hole view model, okay? And it'll find that class, and I'm just going to call it model, okay? So you know, what it's going to do is that it's going to try to do model binding, and if I end up passing a selected contact ID, it'll end up model binding it. Other than that, the only thing that I really need to set for this is model dot contacts. I'm going to do this in one line, uh, new contact VUS, and it's not going to find that class. If I do control dot, it'll find it. And this is going to be dot get contacts. Okay, so that's my model. I can return it to the view. Okay, I can build this again. If I build it, I'll end up getting that you know same same error because I still haven't created my view. I'm going to put one other thing that's going to um, make my life a little bit easier. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is in my um, uh, view model just to know if my contact is the selected contact. I'm going to um, put a prop, uh, put a, a, a uh, boolean method called is selected. And the reason why this is a method is I'm going to pass in a contact, okay, and I'm going to return contact.id equal selected contact ID. Again, I don't have to worry about a null value because, and let me do a double equal sign, don't have to worry about a null value because, again, this is going to default to zero, right? Uh, integer can't be a null value. We're not going to make it nullable. So I've got my controller here. I can actually start to create my, my model. I'm going to build this 
just to make sure that my model shows up in this drop down list. And when I say return view, I'm going to say this is going to be my donut hole view model. I don't need the script libraries, I already have them. Okay. And it's going to go and create it in a folder called donut hole, called index. Let me give this a h2 of donut hole. And I'll put in here donut hole. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just loop over my contacts in order to test this thing out. And I'll say uh, for each VAR contact in model.contacts. Okay. And I'm going to put a list item. And what I'm also going to do here, just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to say, hey, look, if model is selected, contact, okay, then I'm going to say class equals, it's got to be a string, class equals selected, otherwise string.empty, okay. I'm going to stick this here in my list item. Okay. And while I'm at it, I'm going to actually give this a UL and ID. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, contact list. And just so this actually will show up as the selected item in my contact list, I'm going to go to my, um, uh, my site.css and say UL pound contact list li dot selected and I'm just gonna do this a cheap background color okay save this okay at this point if I go back to my index I can go in here and just simply output item excuse me uh, contact dot full name I save this, go back to this page, now I've got my view. Let me actually make sure I built this. Go back to my view, should now find this page. Okay. And I don't have anything selected here, but if I say uh, selected contact ID is one, it's going to be the first item second item and so on and so forth okay so what I'm going to do here is just add a little more text if in fact it's the selected item and what I'm going to do here is just put in a um, if model is selected contact I'm just going to nest in another unordered list okay and just to keep this simple here I'm going to say item dot, not item, I'm not doing that, contact uh, first name, contact last name, and I'll just say uh, contact dot email, right? I could actually start testing that out. If I went back here, don't have to even rebuild, right? If I went back here for this second contact, right, I would see this. I really want these to be links. Okay, and eventually I'm going to use the, the donut uh, hole method to basically do a partial update on the page. But what I'm going to do here is say uh, HTML action link. The text in the link is going to be the full name. The action is going to be index. Okay, and the route values is going to be uh, dictionary, and it's going to be selected contact ID, and it's just going to be contact ID. All right, so now I have my action link, and now if I go back here and I reload this page, and what I could also do is eventually put this up in the in the header over here. But if I go back here, I should be able to click on any of these, and I'll see the details. Now the problem with this is that if I was to you know scroll down here and click on to see the details, right, it's going to load correctly, but it's, I'm going to basically lose my my focus. Right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little little Ajax here, and I'm going to cheat a little bit, do this relatively quickly. Um, I'm going to put my script tag here, and I'm going to actually grab 
do this after my DOM loads. And I'm going to use the live or live function for all of the links that are in UL pound contact list. Okay, live click. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is I'm just setting up an event handler for when these links end up getting clicked on. By the way, if I just went in here and I said return false, which you always have to do, so you, you don't want the default link behavior. Okay, and I went back here, reloaded this page, just to sort of show you. So this is the first one. Clicking on any of these links is not going to do anything now, right? Because, in fact, I haven't, I'm not going to end up posting back. I'm basically just capturing, I'm hijacking the link, but I'm not doing anything with it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, make a get request. Okay? And I'm hijacking the link. I'm basically going to call the same request. I'm going to say dollar sign, um, and I'm going to grab my links, and I'm going to grab my link, and I'm going to grab its href, which is going to be the correct, we, we saw that that's the, That'll end up, uh, you know, calling the right uh, right action with the right parameters, okay? And then I'm going to use my callback function. I'm going to get some data back, which is going to just be some HTML, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on my page. I'm going to find the UL with the pound contact list, okay? And I'm going to say... Uh, Pretty much, I'm going to take, set its HTML property. I'm going to get the data that's coming back from the server, and I'm going to wrap it so I can find the element that I'm looking for. Okay? And I'm going to find that same UL. Okay? I'm going to end up finding it. You could break this up into separate lines. You have a tough time reading it, which I sometimes do. HTML, right? I'm going to set it. make it a little bit easier to read. Um, and what I'm going to end up setting it with is I'm going to find the ul.contact list that I'm getting back from the server, and I'm going to get the HTML. So I'm basically, the, the donut hole part of it is I'm basically uh, going to the server. I'm reloading this entire page. I'm pulling out this unordered list, and I'm replacing it back. And what this will do here, again, not the most efficient way to do this, but what will end up happening here if I reload this guy, okay, and, you know, there's no errors here, so let's just test to see if this works. If I do this, okay, I can see actually it's making an XHR request, right? It's getting back the entire page. You can see everything is here, okay, but the only thing that I'm doing, I'm basically just treating it as text and pulling out what I need. So the, you know, the key advantage here is that if I end up doing, going down to the bottom of the page, right, it'll end up, you know, basically keeping the focus on this thing. So, you know, it's sort of a, just a cheap trick, really, in, in a sense. Again, I'm getting much more data back than I need, and we'll end up doing this, uh, you know, we'll do another example where we end up basically just getting the HTML fragment that I need. This will be the next example, and the last one will be uh, JSON data. But this, in fact, uh, you know, does work. Okay.